Hi everybody, it's Kevin Raber and we're in downtown Indianapolis. And this is really fun. We're back out from under the pandemic. There's four of us sitting on a couch and we're gonna have a lot of fun with a series of videos we're about to do on printing. And uh, we've all taken our COVID test today, so we're safely uh, able to stay here together and uh, talk without a mask, probably not allowed out of the room, but we're okay. And uh, I have with me some esteemed colleagues. On my left is Jeff Shiwi. Many of you know Jeff. Um, I'm sure that many of you will know him better before this is over. On my far right in the red sweater is John Panazzo from uh, Colorbyte Software. He makes a product called Image Print, which I live and swear by and work with all the time. And of course, many of you know Dan Steinhardt, otherwise known as Dano, who's the uh, US Marketing Director for Epson. Did I get that right? I go to Canada too. Oh, he occasionally crosses the border. He's the Epson guy. We wanted to talk a little bit about where photography is today, especially where printing is today, because uh, we're dinner conversations and other things. We're kind of sort of come to the conclusion is that, and, and I've witnessed is that on workshops, for example, I'll have a workshop that costs fifteen twenty thousand dollars to go to Antarctica, bring in twenty thousand dollars of camera equipment. And I see these people again and they've never made a print. That sometimes shocks me. And then we look at the younger generation that's out there and you know they're taking some good pictures, but they're not making prints. When all of us kind of as uh, the, the older generation, um, we had to work with film and we- Gray beards. Gray beards? Yeah. Well, we somewhat gray beards. I think I'm the youngest one here. You are maybe. <laughs> But the bottom line is we, we had to make a print to have a photograph because we shot with negative film or transparency film and you really couldn't do anything with it unless you had a print. So we were very big into printing. And in my own way of looking at photography, the cycle isn't complete until you have a print. And don't get frightened where you think you need to have giant wall prints like you see behind us and elsewhere. These can be small four by six prints uh, we do some in projects like this uh, that sit in these tins. We'll talk about those. They could be in albums or portfolio boxes. A lot of ways that you can share your photography, but by putting on a print, it becomes tactile and tangible and you can pass it around and uh, share a lot differently. Uh, let's talk about where photography is. And Dano, you and I recently have been to marketing events where we've met some of the younger generation of photographers. So why don't we start off with some insight there? We use the word younger, depending on uh, what age you are, if you're viewing this. <laughs> We're uh, older. But yeah, if you're of a certain age, in order to be able to look at your images, you could you know, hold a negative in the air. You could hold a chrome out the window and it would go blue and you couldn't convince an art director, don't worry about it. Uh, but today there's other options. You, know, you don't have to print. You can look at things online. You can look at things on Instagram. And I certainly do that. I think we all do that. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of uh, people coming into the industry who have not grown up with the print. I'm the Epson guy, so obviously I'm biased about printing, you know, full disclosure. But the print helps to differentiate you from many other photographers. And there's something about the print that speaks to the craft of photography. The beauty is today uh, to get to that level of craft does not require an advanced degree from, a, uh, from an MIT or a Caltech. So essentially what you'll see here, um, we will show you uh, a version of Epson print layout, which has really kind of made uh, printing get down to the simple level. John. Yes. You know, you're on a kind of a different scale. What are you seeing as far as uh, where photographers are going with printing? Uh, you're involved in a lot of different avenues on the photographic printing side of things. I think, you know, we primarily deal with people who have to print. Right. They don't really have a choice. It's part of their business model. So we're a little different than looking at photography as a whole and saying, you know, there's a big group that doesn't have to print. We deal with with mostly people who need to print. Um, they profit from printing and we show them how to be more profitable printing with a piece of software that allows them to expand the use of their printer. Right. So a lot of times we'll talk to a photographer um, who's not printing and says, I, just, I don't have a printer because I just don't print that many large things, right? And, and we see a lot more of that these days than we did in the past. What we want to do is, is with our software package is show them all the different ways they can use their printer. 
if you have a large format printer, you don't just have to print large. You can print small and cut, right? So if somebody walks in and needs a thousand four by six, five by sevens, you don't have to turn that business away because there's a solution to print that on a large format printer and automatically cut each one of those out uh, for a professional looking product. Uh, also, you know, when COVID came along, a lot of people needed to print, you know, floor graphics, wall graphics, um, all sorts of signage related to, you know, COVID. And it, it really allowed people to think of their printers in a different way. You know, can I use it for that? What kind of medias are available for that? Adhesives, peel and stick. You know, it really expands how you look at your large format printer and then having a piece of software that addresses, you know, the ease of use for each one of those industries is really what we're all about is, you know, these days is looking at, OK, you have a printer. Let's show you how many ways you can use it to be profitable during the pandemic on Amazon. One of the largest growth markets was art posters because people were spending time at home, redecorating their houses. And, you know, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say 99.9% .9 of those was printed on an inkjet printer, right? Yeah, well, we were and all looking for a good Zoom background. Right, right, right. <laughs> and one of, one of the newest things that we were talking about that we added in the image print was the ability for all of our customers to print copyrighted artwork. Right. And we're gonna show how to do that. I think when we get to that segment uh, with image print, you'll be quite surprised what the product uh, that John has offers in regards to uh, production and type of environment and you know making first prints uh, profiles that are really good for the papers and so forth. So you know we, you'll be seeing that segment coming up. But uh, Jeff, what do you see out there? I see uh, the print as the tangible embodiment of your vision, basically. That's very good. Well, I mean, you can look at stuff on a screen, and that's fine. But and even with a nice iPad, you know, hold it like a print, but it's not a print. It's not tactile. You can't feel the surface or the stiffness. So I like the, the physical embodiment. Um, and yes, uh, I print four by six. When we were in Antarctica, uh, Epson provided us with printers to print in Antarctica with yeah. what we were photographing. And I had at the time, I think a 2200 or something but also a little Epson picture mate. We ran out of paper and ink for the picture mate because everybody liked printing the four by six prints to exchange and, and share. Uh, so whether it's a four by six or a large print like this, uh, it is, uh, it's something tangible and uh, a physical object as opposed to just um, a, an electronic image on a, on a device. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean. This little thing, this iPhone, and this is my new one, um, takes great photos. I mean, it's irritatingly a good camera. Uh, and in fact, I also like my little Sony. Um, and then, you know, I shoot with a larger format. I used to shoot phase one, but now larger format. It's all to get ink on paper. And some of you may know, uh, I actually wrote a little book about making prints um, and it's still it's in print. It's a little book. It's a little book. The digital print, uh, modeled after the other book, The Print by Ansel Adams. And it really is how to get from the capture, which is, you know, uh, whether it's street or landscape or portraits or weddings or whatever you do, you get the image and then you process it and then you print it. And it is easier now than ever before. It's almost embarrassingly easy. Um, I can make a print with Kevin's P900 from my iPhone right here uh, while we're talking. And it's gotten so easy that it, you almost don't need to um, uh, advance your craft. Although, unlike Kevin, I do think there is a value to advancing your craft to match your vision. If you spend a lot of time and effort doing the photography, spending a little bit extra time and effort getting a really good print is worthwhile. I, I agree with Jeff and uh, I am about advancing your craft, but I'm also about putting your foot in the water and experiencing that craft. And one of the things that, as Jeff says, it's easy to print right now from mobile devices or any computer. The point is once you start, you almost get addicted. 
And many of us ended up in this photography field because we saw a print be made in a tray of developer and it was like, holy cow, that was magic. And as you'll see later on, you know, when we look at some of the printers, we're looking at a new magic. We're looking at paper moving, uh, print head moving, squirting 12 colors of ink on the paper at the right spot, making incredible photographs without much effort. You know, I always like to tell people I got into photography because I couldn't draw. <laughs> it was in there, but it just wouldn't go down there. Uh, but the one thing that uh, and Jeff was talking about, the feel, the touch, the texture, the, the dimensionality of a print is that the big difference we see between people that print and those that don't print is that an image on a display device, be it a, uh, an iPad, a tablet, a phone, there's a tendency to do this Swipe. quickly. Swipe. Yep. The print, it forces you to slow down. Yes. And that's good and bad. It means that people are gonna look at your images, but we also wanna find the right balance of ease of use, but the, but the craft and the vision of the photograph so when people slow down, it's worth taking a look at. One of the things that uh, I uh, <laughs> uh, was um, very kind of honored to be selected in um, uh, about a decade ago to the Epson Print Academy. And along with Matt Colbert, Bruce uh, Frazier, Andrew Rodney, John Paul Caponegro, and Greg Gorman, mm -hmm. we would go around and actually do workshops and seminars and one of the things that was really, I think, the most important thing about that was, you know, us talking about stuff. But the print show that you put up, mm. excellent images printed in an excellent manner with well light, because we had uh, Solex bulbs. Mm -hmm. There is something to be said for knowing what a good print is. One of the things that people find is that um, the permanence of a digital object requires, you know, uh, you can lose stuff digitally pretty easily. But one of the things that people tend to do uh, when they have to evacuate, whether it's a fire or a tornado or a hurricane, is grab the photo albums. Yep. And if you, it's harder to take a hard drive or a computer, but it's easier to take a photo album. And quite honestly, uh, when my uh, mother passed away, we found all kinds of photos from the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, that um, uh, they are family heirlooms and treasures, and it's kind of the legacy of the family. Yep. And that's one of the things that I think uh, uh, a lot of us are worried about is that the long-term conservation and preservation of digital objects is actually more difficult than with physical objects, the print. The bottom line is what we're gonna do over the next series of videos that are part of this uh, exercise for the next couple of days, and once again, I wanna thank you guys for coming here to do this, is to show you, you know, how a print is, what a print station is, how you know, a print can come off, how the printers work, how different software works. We're gonna look at Epson print layout, we're gonna look at image print, and Jeff's gonna show us how to print from Lightroom for all those that, that work with Lightroom. We'll talk a little bit about soft proofing and you know, go into a little bit more of the intermediate and advanced side of things, but no matter what, don't be intimidated by things. Start off easy, and as you begin to appreciate what you're doing, you're gonna have that natural tendency to want to understand better, Wonder, understand how do I make my image so that I can show shadow detail and recover highlights so that I can put it on a piece of paper. At PhotoPXL, you know, we want to help you print it out. Wait, PhotoPXL? I thought it was PhotoPixel. That's only the way you say it. So, you know, we'll, we can answer to both it's names. It's PhotoPXL pronounced Pixel. But the PXL is the acronym for Pixel. I'm really proud and honored to have my friends here with me that we can share this with you. So thanks very much.